Hello my fellow detection rule engineers and analysts. Welcome to a new episode of Yara Rule Processing. Today is an, another episode that in which I would like to um, discuss a rule um, of someone else, um, refine it, improve it a bit. Um, and that's the idea. Uh, today I or we look at a rule of someone that wrote it to detect the mm, weaponized documents that exploit CVE 2021-40444, the new um, vulnerability um, that affects Microsoft Windows, uh, the, the Office products, but <coughs> um, as we've already seen, this, this is a more general problem. But what, what we've seen so far is, is our MS Office documents and some proof of concepts using uh, RTF files. And someone wrote a rule to detect the specific strings that are present in in these um, in the wild examples, and we will look at at this rule and try to try to improve it a bit. As always, I've removed the author not because I don't want to give credit, but just to um, maybe, m as I said in my first video, I I, I try not to fen offend anyone by criticizing or changing the rules. It's a good rule, it does the job, but um, I would like to, to improve it um, from my point of view and um, adjust it to our special use case. Because um, as you may have already guessed from looking at that rule, it's, it's about performance or memory usage in, in this case. And um, in my use case, or the I use the rules in, in our scanners and we we use thousands of rules on millions of files of hundreds of thousands of endpoints and therefore um, I always try to, 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 to tweak the rules, to tune them, to make them as, as fast and as less memory consuming as possible while uh, maintaining a, a solid and good coverage. And therefore, um, we will look at this rule. This is, as I said, it does the job, but I would like to improve it a bit. Um, if you haven't looked at it so far, please do. And um, follow me now when I, when I go through the strings and through the condition and, um, and try to, to explain what my thinking process and what I would like to change in that rule. So right at the start, when we look at the first string, uh, we see that the author uses a regu regular expression to um, select XML files by this um, first string here, the A string. He uses this expression that looks for the XML header, a space, a version that follows, and then a, a version number. Uh, to give you more context for this, um, let's look at the actual file. The size, uh, you can see it has, now you can't see, I will just move this into the window. Um, down here you may be able to see that the size of this file is 1200 bytes. So it's not very big. There's an XML, XML header and that's, that's the case for these um, for this office templates and for the, um, for the new office format which is a, it's a, it's a compressed um, folder uh, compressed to an to a zip archive, and in that folder you can you can rename every docx and pptx and xlsx document meant for Word, uh, PowerPoint, and Excel, and extract and then rename it to zip and then extract it. So that's also important to keep in mind when you when you look at the rule. Um, 
always keep in mind that when that when you use the Yara utility, Yara utility sorry, for the command line, this this utility won't extract zip files for you to to match on them. So what you always have to do is that you have to decompress them first before scanning. Um, in in the ca in my use case with our scanners. Uh, with Thor, um, the th also the Thor Lite version, uh, which is for f which you can get for free, um, it it will decompress the contents in memory, and then scan them there, uh, and you will get matches even even with this rule. You don't have to uh, to extract the contents of of these new documents to to make the rule match. Um, but keep that in mind. Whenever you have a, a sample processing pipeline, maybe from your sandbox, from, from internal sandbox, where you drop samples or where users can upload samples, and then you you uh, match Java, Yara rules on on these samples. Always keep in mind to extract them first and uh, match on on the contents. Okay, back to the rule. So what we've seen is um, there's an, an XML header, and um, the author here looks for this uses that regular expression at the position zero, which means at the beginning of the file to match for that XML header. I would I wouldn't do that. There are two steps yeah, two steps uh, in to improve to improve to simplify that that expression. The first one would be to to just yeah to just um, convert it to a string and let that string match at position zero yeah right that's that's something that that we could simply that we, that we can do to simplify that and to remove the regular expression it's not that important that the xml has the right version number in it or no it wasn't it wasn't a uh, specific version number it was just looking for a version number this is absolutely um i would say this is sufficient to to select xml files but we can still we could simplify this um, by not using the full not using the full string, but but maybe just the first four bytes, as we do it m many times with um, portable executable files or other file formats that we just use a short magic header for the selection. And in this case, files which we the thinking process is that we assume that files that begin with these four characters are typically XML files. It starts with um, with these two characters and then follows an X and an M. It's most likely uh, with 99.99 um, probability an XML file that that would follow. So we what we do is we copy these four bytes here in the hex editor as hex text. I use a shortcut for that. It's Command Shift C for um, the editor that I use, which is 010 editor. Uh, I can only recommend it. Uh, I know the author very well. He tries to um, to reach out to see what what our community is interested in in hex editors, and uh, he did a great job so far. There are scripting options, tools like that. I will maybe I will I will. Um, present some of the features in one of one of the next videos maybe so i will copy this as hex text and uh, oh. then we'll paste these bytes in here and we have to reverse the order you could use uh, you could use uint 32be for big endian, but since we are working with, oh, I, I'm used to working with the little endian um, way to format it. Uh, I would just do that. I re I've reversed the byte order here. Let's see if if it was correct. Sometimes I make errors just because I'm I'm talking while typing. 678. Yep, 3F3C, 3F3C. Okay, perfect. So this is the first statement. This is this is my header check. Ah, uh, we can remove that now because um, we we check for the XML header with this statement here. 
with this part of the condition. And it's a... Um, I'm not exactly sure. There are some shortcuts um, that um, that happen before the, ev the string evaluation uh, in Jara. Um, but I'm not sure if if this would um, if this also counts for the for the magic header check. Um, let me see. There is something that I could show you. Um, Jara performance guidelines. Yep. I I wrote I wrote Jara performance guidelines guidelines. If you would if you would like to to learn more about um, what is a, a, a good way to write um, Jara rules that use less CPU cycles, less memory, then you should definitely check these guidelines. These guidelines. Um, but let's get back to the rule. So we use this header check instead of the instead of the string at position zero. And now we look at the, the second string. The second string contains another statement looking here for an HTTP address, relationships, OLE object, OLE object, attached template. I would I will simplify this. Because when we when we look at when we look at the file again in, in normal view, you see that he he replaces this part of the um, of the string with that regular expression to to um, to allow other uh, URL prefixes before the relationship relationships and OLA only object string. So I would simplify this and do something like that. Now you see here in the in the in your in the regular expression you see that he uses uh this statement and um to what's called to to resolve this we would have to uh, um split this up when we when we um, want to remove the regular expression and use strings instead also oh, I have to copy that so what we would do is this we would look for one of these one of b right and then we look at we look at string with we look at the string c okay it also includes an, these this this important part which is the mhtml url with http could be s could be ssl protected uh, http um and then this um this part in here could also be HTTPS, but uh, what I would do now, and I and I that's that's also is also and always a, an assumption that by writing this in this form, that by by writing this in this form here and th this regular expression is ob obviously unnecessary right what we could do here is also use the no case to to make it more robust um but my assumption is that by removing the, the regular expression splitting this up and and combining these two strings uh, we wouldn't lose any coverage uh, why is that i or we we would also not um, cause too many false positives uh, the, the files are typically not that big so um, if this if this appears in a file and this appears in a file that's good enough for me uh, we also have the external value here 
and, and the XML is at the beginning, I would say this is good enough. What we could do to improve that rule without any losing any coverage is also use the file size uh, file size and add for example 5 kilobytes as a limit then all of a uh, one of b and all of let's do this in this way and all of z Yeah, what, should, what you should always do as well is um, test this rule on the command line if it contains syntax errors. And I see, f at, at least for my samples, at least for my samples that I have, that I have extracted, uh, saved and extracted in a, in a certain folder on my disk, uh, f for this sample, this still still mat uh, this rule still matches. And I what I would do now is I would um, send this rule to the or to the author ask him to test this rule on the samples that he uh, wrote it for, uh, my improved, that he wrote, wrote his rule for, and then test my rule on, on these samples. As you can see, we, have, we now have a header check, we have a file size check, which limits, and uh, I think in the file size case at least, it would um, be a shortcut before the string evaluation happens, so we could gain gain some speed especially when you when you have lots of xml files on your disk which are which are much bigger then it would without this second um, uh, part of the condition look at at all xml xml files and and um, extract strings and try try to find these try to find these strings in that file um, and therefore we we add this file size uh, limitation shouldn't be a problem and it should still match on 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 the samples so we have improved it. I hope that we um, that we can save some CPU cycles. We, we can save some some memory with with a new rule. Um, don't lose any coverage and avoid false positives as well. I hope you liked it. See you in the next time. <laughs>